Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. Well, it's time to have another great conversation with some of the leading technology in the grain handling industry, and none the less than one of the most popular men with Sukup that we know. Kerry is back on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right? Did I say that correctly? One of the most popular guys within the company? Uh, during harvest, uh, when dryers are running, that could be the case. Now that, now that John's retired? <laughs> now that, oh, John's retired? I didn't know John retired. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Kerry, why don't you remind our listeners who you are and what your role is? Uh, Kerry Hartwig, and I'm the dryer sales director here at Sukup. So kind of work between engineering and sales and, uh, and our service guys on the dryer product line. Kerry was one of the first representatives that I ever met because you came and spoke at one of the very first farm for profit conferences. Or Innovator, right? Meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What a great presentation then, and I feel like your message has only gotten better ever since. Didn't you have to put up one of their uh, grain bins oh, while yeah. you were there, if the I remember this home. story, the safety home? We had the, the <laughs> FFA kids come help us put that together, and they all had to leave to go to a sports practice. So the last hour and a half of putting the safety home together was us. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we're here having a, an exposure at some of the upgrades that Sukup has done to their already extremely important and reliable equipment. What are we talking about? Well, on a dryer, to, you know, the dryer line specifically, we've got uh, basically everything, you know, every option of dryer that, that, that's out there, we, we make it. Uh, whether that's tower dryers, you know, primarily commercial, um, the, the screen dryers are kind of the uh, more of the, the small farm, all heat, dump hot, cool in the bin type of a dryer. And then the, the mixed flow dryers, which have really been, you know, soaring in popularity the last uh, five years or so. Um, th those have, have really kind of started taking over what's being ordered and produced. Corey, did you follow the trend? Are you now running a mixed flow dryer? We have a mixed flow dryer on our farm. Uh, we went up to Sukup last fall, went through, uh, what do you guys call that, dryer school? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I tell you what, that was really, really helpful um, because there's so much new technology. No longer is it uh, heat and flow and all that. There's a lot more going into it. That's really one of the most fun events of the entire year for us because uh, we invite all the new dryer customers to come in to suit up. Uh, we do the plant tour, but then we spend uh, two, three hours just going through how to run your dryer yep. um, and then talk about all the different sensors and, and a lot of it's terminology even, so we're not talking about that doohickey on the top. You know, yeah. it's, it's a specific name and just makes troubleshooting and, and making things work a lot easier. Can Go we hit the red button. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I'm guessing there's some newer technology and touchscreens in it as I watch the booths that we've sat at. Uh, I see a lot of that. Even you go buy a new truck anymore. I was fortunate enough to do that. And even the Ford dealer said, well, we need an hour to go through the screen to tell you how to program everything. <laughs> I'm assuming that's some of the technology for the guys that are afraid of that touchscreen. Yeah, that's right. I mean, all these dryers are controlled by a touchscreen. It's a 12-inch touchscreen. Um, and, and then a couple things on that. Uh, the, the remote access app where you can look at your dryer on your, on your cell phone or, yep. your, or your tablet or whatever, that's becoming more and more requested. Uh, there's less and less people you know, available just to be the dryer guy. So being able to check on your dryer from your truck or your combine is a big deal. I'd uh, be able to make changes, set up permissions so that you can have, you know, certain people just look at it and certain people can look at it and make changes. All that is available. You got to have an app. I told Corey the other day, my wife got a new Maytag dryer. It tells us when our clothes are done. I don't really know what the value is here. You, but You got a new Maytag dryer. <laughs> but we have a dryer and it has an app and it tells you when your clothes are done. So it doesn't fold them though. There you go, Corey. <laughs> yeah, that's what we need next. <laughs> that's, that's what we need. Hang them up, take them to the closet yeah i just want to say uh last fall not everything went smoothly on our our bin site upgrade and it wasn't sukup's fault all we moved some old bins and had taken a uh, crib down things like that and so it just got to the point where you just expected a problem and we're like all right now it's time to start the dryer this could be an issue there's a lot of stuff going on it was the smoothest thing we did all fall i mean we had that thing cooking and dialed in in less than a couple hours that's awesome. I mean, and, and you know, to be honest and fair, I mean, usually it does take a little bit to get a dryer going because there's so much interlock to it. You know, it's controlling your wet bin and, and equipment taking grain to your dry bins and, and different things. So, you know, working with electricians and the dealers and the installers and getting it all interlocked, sometimes it does take a day or two to yeah. get all the work worked out the first time you go, but after yeah. that, it usually is pretty smooth sailing. I mean, a big shout out to our electrician. I mean, their bill came in about three times what they said it was going to be, <laughs> but I think it. W I think it's worth it. It because they have stuff like if we want to go put in automation and down the road like we're ready to go like yeah. it's all ready <laughs> we, we don't have to to worry about it so I, they really made that thing run smooth what else could you do for automation 
Um, like we could add a pit, we could add another leg, um, all that, the blending capabilities, all that okay. kind of stuff. I mean, we have uh, three phase power there and every motor is set up on timers and things like that. So not everything is surging at once. Um, so there's just, it's crazy. You can just keep adding and adding, adding to it. Well, one of the new things you get to talk about here, Kerry, is you've now got a dryer that is full heat top to bottom. Yeah, so we, we, our, our mixed flow dryer line, we came out with that in 2015, and they've, they've been a heat with vacuum cool. That's kind of been our twist on the mixed flow dryer of energy recovery. Um, but we do have some customers that, uh, that, that, that doesn't really fit for. They, they're, you know, particularly in the grain, it'd be, it'd be you know, maybe a little smaller farm size where they want to discharge out of the dryer hot and then cool in the bin. That means, you know, the bins have to be set up with floors and the right amount of airflow for cooling, but it's certainly a lot more economical to wait to dry corn, you know, on a little bit smaller scale. And then we're also finding there's other specialty markets that that fits really, really well for, uh, whether it's rice or some of the nut crops or things like that. Uh, so it really opens uh, some other possibilities for us. Yeah. Well, hey, if you, you hear that. You know we're live. We're going tractor pulling. Exactly <laughs> we're going right. tractor pulling. <laughs> so does that make that dryer more efficient or that's just another option for the producer? Um, the efficiency of full heat versus heat with vacuum cool, we found to be pretty close to the same. Um, but it, it just depends on the application. To, to be able to run full heat, we got to have bins that are able to cool in them. You know? And we're seeing grain bin sizes on farm getting bigger and bigger and where it's just impossible to push enough air up through those bins to cool it. And frankly, it takes more management to, to be able to do that as well. And like I said, the, the labor availability for doing all that uh, seems to be getting less, not, not greater. So uh, that's where the heat cool dryers, you know, what we started with are really come in. Um, but that doesn't fit everybody. And yeah. that's kind of been our mantra on dryers. We want to have the best product to fit every situation. And this kind of rounds out that for mixed flows. So everything has trade-offs. So I imagine what you're gaining from dumping hot is capacity. Yeah, you're gaining two things, capacity, um, and then, you know, your grain quality is good because you're, you're, you're cooling it slowly in the bin. Um, and I guess maybe a third thing is, is budget. I mean, it's going to be a less expensive dryer because it's just heating and not, not and cooling. And not as tall, I would imagine, because that cooling portion of the mixed flow is pretty tall yeah, on the bottom. Yeah, no, that's right. You can, you'd easily be able to fill one of these with, uh, with an auger or a double yeah. run. has been a real popular way to do it. But I will say, so we have the cooling on our mixed flow and dump into that big 60 foot, 100,000 bushel bin. It was nice having the peace of mind that that went in cool and we didn't, probably yeah. didn't have any hot spots and things of that nature and it, it was good quality all the way down to the and bottom. That, that'd be a really big bin to try to cool in. Yeah. Uh, it would make yep. me pretty nervous and then you, you, know, you end up with the condensation and almost rain from the roof and on the side walls and that can, that can you know, end up with clumps of grain that end up in your sump and plug in the sump and then you know, I, a lot. What a lot of things we like to talk about is safety. You know, and this stuff too. And if we can keep sumps from plugging up, then we don't need to get in the bin or make a stupid decision of getting in the bin. Right. And that's when accidents happen. So yeah, hmm. that's a big point. And I know our listeners right now are focused even more on their margins and especially the conversations they're going to have with their bankers. And we've been saying on this podcast for a long time that. You know, it seems like tile pays. If you're going to go to your banker, that's a pretty easy conversation. But it also seems like grain storage and even grain drying capacity is another one that is, uh, I'm going to say, easier to convince your banker to invest in with you. Unless Make it was last fall. <laughs> Unless it was last fall. <laughs> There's always an exception, I guess. But, uh, but yeah, to store it, you got to be able to dry it on farm. And, and that's something that's coming up this year a lot, too, with where crop prices are. Guys may be hanging on to grain a little bit longer, and uh, to do that, they might want to think about drying it just a little more uh, as it goes into the bin to be able to do that. So, so typically we dry to try to get to around 15%. If you were going to hold longer than a year, what would you recommend? And then you probably want to be under 14. Yeah. And there, there's very good, uh, like they call it allowable storage time uh, tables. Uh, we've got it in our bin operation manual. I think a lot of the university extension uh, people can get you that too. But if you kind of know how long you're going to store it, they do have you know official recommendations of how, how, how low to take it. So for the guy that doesn't know why do we go from 15 to 14 or 13 what if we're going to hold it longer what's what's your, that do your allowable storage time increases the lower the moisture is of the grain so okay. you know if uh, uh you know, I, I think a lot of times you can get away with 15.5 in, in moisture so ideally we'd sell every bushel exactly at 15.5 and take no dock uh that, that's hard to manage that exactly that's why a lot of guys do shoot for the 15 within a year uh, but if it's going to be longer than that the grain may not stay in condition may start to spoil um you know even at 15 15 5 under certain conditions and yep. that that would be the reason to I go gotcha. less. So everything has trade-offs Dave, right? Like I said, so yeah. you're giving up some weight, which is your bushels, okay. to, to dry another percent or two. 
but you're gaining length and time. You're, you're long the market. You're hoping the market goes up. Right. Right? Because otherwise you would have just been better off selling. You want to sell as much water as you can. Yeah. But yep. Gotcha. Yeah, that's the next thing you need to invent is that sprinkler system on the way out of the bin. They put water back into it. <laughs> well, the guys coming up may, may have something for you there, too. Oh, <laughs> so. okay. I okay. like that. Well, if our listeners are curious about dryers and dryer technology, how best they look up or get in touch with you guys? Well, certainly our website, sukup.com. We have dealer locators on there. If they don't know who their local dealer is, uh, they can put that in and you know pick which product, whether it's dryers or bins, material handling, um, and, and find out who those who those nearest dealers are. Awesome. Thanks for joining us again. You bet. Thanks for having me.